Welcome, friends. It is Sunday morning, so we're going to do another one of our pre-World War II, post-Depression or Depression-era recipes out of these community cookbooks that we have. And today we're going to use my favorite recipe published by the Stainer Sun in 1938, and we are going to make meatloaf. Um, I have to admit, I am a sucker for meatloaf. So, already in this bowl, um, I have two pounds of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. And to that, I'm going to add two eggs. Um, has anyone noticed, uh, if you live in North America, that grocery stores just don't sell medium ground beef anymore or any sort of ground beef that has fat in it? The only thing you can get now pretty much is extra lean or lean. Um, you have to ask the butcher, and I use that term very vaguely, um, you have to ask the butcher to grind beef for you. And even then they sort of look at you like you've got two heads. Why would you want ground beef with any sort of fat in it? Because fat is flavor um, and fat sort of helps the cooking process. And if you don't have fat, everything is just dry and hard to eat. Um, so after the two eggs, I've got a cup of milk and I'm using Whole milk, homo milk, 3% uh, milk. Um, it's called homo or 3% here in Canada. After the milk, six soda biscuits rolled fine. Um, I'm gonna use a mortar and pestle and break up the soda biscuits. You could crack these up any way you want. Um, you know, food processor or a rolling pin in a plastic bag. I think this is going to do the trick for me. This is going to be a lot of meatloaf. Uh, Mrs. DB must have had some very hungry farmhands to feed. <laughs> in go the crushed soda crackers. And next in, a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. Um, you can tell me that I may have led a very sheltered life when it comes to eating meatloaf, but I have never had a meatloaf recipe that used poultry seasoning um, as the seasoning. This is a first for me. I'm really looking forward to it because I love poultry seasoning. Um, breakfast sausages, amazing. Now, salt. And I'm going to put the pepper in next, even though it calls for something in between the salt and the pepper. Usually those two things go together on the recipe. Next in is half a cup of tomato soup. Now, I've had a debate about this. It's half a cup of cream of tomato soup. I'm assuming, maybe incorrectly, that what she is referring to is Campbell's condensed cream of tomato soup. Um, do I put it in straight from the can in its condensed version, or do I water it down with milk or water um, like you're supposed to, or do I just assume that the milk that I've already put in there is enough liquid? Uh, that looks like a lot of liquid. I'm going to go with, I'm just going to pour in the tomato soup and see what happens. Uh, if I need to add extra liquid later, I will. But I have a feeling I won't need it. So, can of Campbell's soup here is 284 milliliters. Cup is 250 milliliters, so a little less than half a can of tomato soup. And... Uh, Onions, cut fine. In they go. Now we mix. And the only kitchen tool for mixing this is your hands. So just get right in there. You don't need gloves. Just make sure you've washed them beforehand. Everything will be fine. Yeah, it'll be a little bit uh, squishy <laughs> and it might not look pretty, but this is the way you do it. So the instructions say to mix well and shape into a loaf. Now, I'm assuming from that that I'm not shaping it into a loaf pan. I'm going to shape it into a loaf on a baking tray. So, big lump onto the baking tray and we'll shape it into a loaf. Huh, apparently my loaf shaping skills are pretty good. So, I'm just going to wash my hands and get rid of this bowl before the next step. Now, we 
pour a quarter cup of cream of tomato soup on top before putting it in the oven. Looks good. Into the oven. So fresh out of the oven, one very large meatloaf. It is a big meatloaf. Um, let's uh, slice a little bit off there, Jules, and we'll get it on the plate. All right. Steamy, steamy. As I touch the metal pan, <laughs> not the wisest thing I've done today. Okay. Looks moist. It does. I'm, um, so let's, let's see. It is hot though, so I'm going to try and only take a tiny piece. Well, apparently I'm not going to take a tiny piece. Interesting. Tastes like meatloaf. It tastes like meatloaf. Yeah. It's it's got that onion flavor, that yeah. savory kind of flavor. There's no Okay, so this is meatloaf for people that want to taste meat. Yes. There's no overpowering sauce or spice mix or No. No, it is It is a it is very it is, standard meatloaf. Yeah. 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 So what kind do you put on a sandwich? Yes. <laughs> and so in the context of of when this recipe would have been made, 1938, um, I imagine this, I can see my You're saying there wasn't a Tex-Mex trend in no. rural Ontario? No. At that no, and time? I, Is that what you're trying to say? And I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm thinking back and I see my grandfather pulling up to the back door on the tractor, coming inside, my grandmother yelling at him to wash his hands, washes his hands in the laundry tub, comes in and sits down for dinner, but dinner is noontime. Yes, dinner it's, is at noon. Do, dinner's at noon, it's, it's lunch. It's a stack of bread. It's a stack of bread. Um, a slice of this slathered with mashed potatoes filled with butter and cream. You got the bread. There was always, I don't know about on your table, but there was always a bowl of molasses. Uh, not at dinner, but yeah, we would have molasses at supper. So dinner time, there was always molasses. He'd dip his bread in the molasses. Or corn syrup. Or corn syrup, yeah. It'd be dark, dark corn syrup. Yeah. Um, and you would eat this and then, depending on the season, there would be either fresh beans from the garden or canned beans from last season and he'd put it all on top piece of bread slathered with, <laughs> with and, and all he, together and he'd eat it all together and you wouldn't you wouldn't eat a scoop of this and then a scoop of something else you would eat it all together and so the flavor of this was more you wanted the beef flavor because it was going to be mixed with everything else it complemented everything else yeah. that's funny because my grandfather kind of ate the same way he would just kind of put it all in one pile in the middle boom and you would eat it everything was a casserole <laughs> in the end <laughs> so if if you're looking at this in the lens of today, a lot of people would say bland. But looking at it, how it would have been eaten then. But I actually don't find it bland. No, we don't. No. But I can I can hear the screaming of the commenters how bland it is because a lot of people today expect a lot of other flavors. A lot of other flavors put in all at once. Um, I think this is a very serviceable meatloaf. I think it's a great place to start. You could put celery you could put so flavors in, yeah. in it. You could put. Yeah. You could really, you could really ramp this up and make it and make it today. Which you know, it's just a basic meatloaf. So, thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. Bring lots of friends. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot of meatloaf. <laughs>